Marcus Barclays Kenya has posted an 18% jump in profit before tax to 6.3 billion shillings. Now, the subsidiary of Barclays PLC said earnings growth was led by a 10% increase in income, well below the 3% increase in costs. Joining us now to unpack the numbers, Aidan Mohammed, CEO of Barclays Bank of Kenya. Aidan, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope it's a warmer there in Kenya because it's snowing here in Santon. Thank you very much, Samantha, for having me. It's uh, cold here as well. Cold there as well. Oh, well. Well, that's what we're seeing right now. It seems that winter is still holding on. Let's just take a look um, at the income side of the business. We've got net interest income, as I said, jumping by 21%, and largely driven by the, the interest income gains. As you saw, 7.3 billion shillings coming from loans and advances, uh, 2.3 billion coming from government debt. Uh, was the growth that you saw in interest income in line with your uh, expectations and targets? Uh, indeed. I think um, it's been a while since we've seen uh, top-line growth in our business here to a large extent because of uh, challenging macroeconomic activities that uh, Kenya has gone through and indeed our business uh, reacted uh, to that accordingly. So a 21% growth in net, net interest income is something that we welcome a lot and is a momentum that we would like to build on in the second half of this year. Talk to us about total loans and advances and the kind of growth that you're looking at coming through from there because uh, that was up by 10%, 101 billion shillings is where it stands at right now. What is your full year target and, and where are you looking to, to grow most aggressively if you could kind of break it down across your, your target group? Well, as a universal bank where our portfolio of loans is spread evenly between the corporate and the consumer business, we would like to see that trend uh, going uh, forward into the future. And a 10% growth uh, in loans this year is something that uh, is in line with our expectation. We had come out of a very difficult uh, macroeconomic environment in Kenya uh, at the end of last year where we saw Kenya shilling uh, getting depreciated significantly um, uh, uh, unexpectedly and interest rates getting to as high as 30% in some cases. So we were very cautious uh, towards the run up to the end of last year, but have made sure that we turn around the corner in terms of building a, a profitable book going into 2012. 20, uh, now, our 10% growth uh, is good, but we would like to continue with the momentum getting into December. But that would all be informed by what is going to happen in the macroeconomic conditions, which so far are pointing in the right direction. But clearly with elections uh, approaching uh, in December and March 2013, we've got to be cautious in uh, how we grow that book profitably. Of course, that managing risk and everything. What is your target for total loans and advances? Do you have a number on the table that you hope to get to by year end? I think uh, our plan is to grow by at least another 10%, uh, but it really will be informed by you know, what is going to be the case in the interest rates environment in particular. And I'm very pleased to see that despite what we saw last year in coming into the first quarter of this year, all the indicators are pointing in the right direction, and we just want to make sure we leverage on that uh, to get to our desired number. Talk to us about customer deposits because that expense line increasing quite substantially during the period to 1.22 billion shillings, yet the total number of customer deposits fell back to 122.48 billion shillings. So, so explain that uh, discrepancy there. Well, basically what happened is if I just take a step back in the year 2010 uh, leading into early 2011, interest rates were at extremely low in Kenya as low as between 1% to 2% in terms of interbank rates and rates on the treasury bills and bonds in Kenya. Now, those rates were never going to be sustainable, and a hit on the currency as well as inflation uh, forced the central bank to actually increase its central bank rate from something like 6.5% to 18%, uh, which has stayed there for a very long time until about a month ago. Now, the consequence of that was to drive the general level of interest rates very aggressively. And what we decided to do was to make sure that we were choosing selectively the kind of deposits and at the right price that we were taking on. 
And so as a result of significant migration to customer deposits onto higher yielding assets like treasury bills, we were prepared to lose some of those deposits without necessarily taking them on expensively and passing that cost to customers. Let's so the decline in deposit rate is as a result of that. Yeah. On the cost side of the business, you have made some improvements there. Cost to income ratio sitting at 50% from 54%. Uh, you have gone through, of course, uh, cost restructuring. You've laid off some, some, uh, some of your workforce. Do you feel that this has been successful? Has it yielded the results that you were hoping for? This has been a very successful uh, area for our business development. Uh, we invested immensely in technology and through improvements in productivity, we have been able to actually do more with fewer headcounts. And, and I think it's something that we will continue to focus on as we try and drive a lot of our customers from traditional branches to uh, much more convenient and, and low cost channels such as mobile banking, um, ATMs, and, and we, for example, across Africa, waived ATM charges across uh, our businesses. And that is all geared towards driving customers from more expensive service channels into much more efficient and convenient from their point of view. And, and this, as we continue to build that, we will see costs coming down, and it's an area that we'll continue to focus on. Aidan, thank you so much for joining us today on Power Lunch. Aidan Mohammed is the CEO of Barclays Bank of Kenya.